Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia Pilot in the universe of Chinese. Let's continue unpacking some Chinese expressions idealizing female beauty. We do have very rarely some expressions to describe man's beauty, but most expressions dedicated to a human beauty is on female. Okay, yet your Taohua is another expression um, on girls. And we're here comparing female beauty to peach blossom again. We saw that many times. I guess the Chinese just like peach blossom so much. But here, the key word to differentiate this expression from other flora related uh, expressions is this character, yet. Okay, um, we actually have, <laughs> in Chinese, uh, we use yet xin to describe porn star. So now we know yet in Chinese have the connotation of seductiveness. That's not culturally approved female behavior, I guess. Like you're not supposed to exert your sexual power or appealingness or attractiveness, like less even monetize it, right? So that was not culturally approved, but it is desirable to men, right? So that's why there is such an expression to describe a type of female beauty that's yet, that came out vibrant, almost like aggressively attractive, okay? <laughs> uh, so yet, it is a complicated character as well. When you look at it, it's like at least, at least four different objects in there. So the first object in the top left corner, that's a container with harvest crop. So that's a offering to the gods. When humans, you know, agriculture depends so much on the weather condition. So this offering, of once you succeeded in making a sex, you know, harvest, harvest rich year, then you're going to say thank you to whoever enabled it, right? Which, which means the weather condition, which it means the divinity that humans imagine, like the environmental factors that we would put the best crop of the year in a container to you know, offer. <laughs> That's um, say thank you. Okay, then the bottom is um, kind of like a stool with a circular thing. That's like a container with a lid on it. So it's kind of a cookware. So the cookware with this, um, offering to God of the, the year's harvest is a image to create. Together, it means abundance. It means you have extra food, therefore you can afford to offer that to the God, to say thank you with your hard earned um, harvest for that day, for that year. So this, the bottom can be, besides a cookware, because it's a food related, right? Um, it can also be viewed as a, a, a stand, almost like an um, altar. So it's if we put it in a religious context, it's almost like an elevated ground, a special dedicated to you know, divinity, gratitude, expression. Okay, the right uh, here looks very different from the contemporary Chinese. So the right looks like... Um, Somebody is exiting, uh, like leaving a space. So this airplane looking thing is supposedly to be a human figure walking fast in big strides, right? It's like a walking. And then the bottom look like a wine glass and somebody's holding that wine glass here. Like it's kind of look like that, right? So this, this is kind of a cheers and somebody's departuring. So it's almost like a farewell to you know, whoever is leaving. And together, it means vibrant. So I can only fill in the interpretation or imagination of what I would view, why it, it means vibrant. Because yen, okay, in today's language, it means uh, seductive woman, or it can also mean um, like a sun radiating in its peak time. It's really bright. It's like overwhelmingly uh, sun rays are throwing at you, right? So I would view that as 
you know, vibrant, meaning sending a lot of energy, emitting a lot of energy, uh, supposedly positive energy out to the world because of the abundance of the food that you, can, you even have wines to make it into offerings or to make it into rice wine, right? And life is good in that sense. So this, this everyday living in the context of ancient times, you humans are not so productive in agriculture endeavor. And a lot of them depends on the weather condition that you have this abundance in both forms expressed. And then you have that person making big strides, going somewhere um, and the cookware. So all this gives you this texture of human society when thriving, when you have rice wine to drink, when you have abundance to sacrifice to the God in exchange for even more favorable condition in the future that humans, we can make big strides, you know, going where we want to feel at least food secure, right? And that's the kind of a vibrancy it came from. All that abundance and positive energy, you know, feeling good about it. It involves with drinking, involved with extra food, right? Okay, so that's vibrant. And Rua, we have this plant symbol again. So this two trident looking thing placed next, you know, one next to each other is the plant based symbol. So this is something related to plant. And then we have the mouse symbol, which is kind of box shape with up to the corner, almost like a spiny face. Mouse, okay. And the three finger hand symbol, okay. I mean, isn't that picture obvious? We have the plant, we have the mouse. In between is the hand. That depicts the hunger gatherer society. The gathering activity is to pick the right plant to feed the mouse, right? Isn't that obvious? <laughs> At least obvious to me now. I mean, after I put some thought to it, I'm like why it means like. Okay, so um, this gathering. I would imagine it's a selective gathering. You better make the right call. What plant to gather to feed your clan, right? So this, this like almost implies this selective or the selection or this judging process of you pick the right type of plant or fruit or leaves um, to, your, to feed your clan. And this selective process then captured in this rule of you are trying to comparing um you know you're, you're trying to filter through nature the abundance in nature in filtered through you by your hand selection cherry picking so to speak right and then filter through edible fruit this filtering process then becomes this rule so i guess it's a comparison of something it's almost like a dimensional reduction, right? So something so complicated, so rich. And then through this filtering or judgment or selection or gathering process, and then you leave with a few qualities that you're really seeking out. In this case, it's plants in the, in the nature, filtering to edible plants that benefit humans. So that's ruo. Yan, ruo, tao hua, peach, blossom. So you see tao, made of tree symbol versus hua made of this plant base shared in the rule. So this tree symbol differentiate itself from the, the regular generic plant by having this huge trunk, vertical line, connecting the canopy of the tree and the root of the tree. So that's the tree symbol. And because peach is, is a tree, so we have to put a tree symbol on the side. And then the right side is depicting the unique nonlinear zigzag pattern. It's not even zigzag because zigzag is a pattern, right? You can recognize as a zig and zag. That's how linguistically we're depicting zigzag, right? Like that. But peach, it's really um, hard to depict a random, random pattern occurring on the surface of the peach fruit. And this random occurrence was depicted by the ancient record keeping on turquoise. So you have messages carved 
on the shelves of turquoise to um, pass cross-generational wisdom through this media of record keeping. Ancient times, were, were the easiest one is a rope, uh, roping, tied a knot, and that's counting to 10. But to get more, even more complicated messages to pass down the generation. And actually, a lot of ancient Chinese character was preserved on such turquoise shells that we have a whole segment of characters discovered the ancient way of writing them preserved on the shelves. And of course, the shelves are going to crack over the years. And so it becomes like a challenge, I guess, people, whoever does that. Uh, it's like archaeology in terms of language, right? To discover, to unearth such evidence of early age language development and such characters preserved on such shelves, you have to distinguish are they humanly carved strokes or the natural cracking of, of the material? So eventually this, this cracking represented by this crack line in the middle, and then this two, two tiny little lines that kind of a, your hand gingerly holding that, just like this uh, wine glass have two finger, tip of finger. I mean, human's unique hand have the thumb opposite to the other four. Therefore, we can do this. No other animals supposedly to be able to do that, to have their thumb to, to do this clasping thing. So this clasping was captured in both icons here. So this clasping of this strip of record keeping ancient turquoise with messages carved around with a crack in the middle. So that's what's depicting in there. And that crack, that cracking become this random pattern that it's hard to predict like where things are going to crack. Um, so that was used and to depict the random pattern occurring on the peach fruit, on the peach tree. So that's peach. <laughs> and flower have this generic plant symbol on the top, right? Two layers of petals. Two means multitudes. It doesn't mean just two layers. And then two sets of them. That means a lot of them, multiplication of them. So you in your mind are going to make up the remaining of the picture, even if linguistically we only showed icons as four petals in there. But I only give you the sense of layering and multitudes of these. So that's the flower Im image by flowering petals and then the pollen poles in there kind of in this shape. So we have the main organs of the flower and at the bottom, the two horizontal lines with this curve sign is this puff of air coming out of your lungs, going through the blockage of your mouth, lips, teeth, and tongue to create different sound as speaking. And then the words coming out become audible. And the sound bites or sound bit uh, over there is, is the result of speaking. So you have the, the origin, the production, and the result of speaking, the three steps of, of, of speaking. So pair that with the zoom up view of those main organs or features of flower is the flower is plants speaking, plants communication with the world. I mean, I guess plants communicate with each other with the surrounding environment all the time except that we cannot detect that. And for us to obviously observable, like observable to human eyes um, with our limited sensors that we cannot, you know, smell pollens or probably some can smell pollens, but uh, a lot of messages from fl flowers are under our radar and the things that are observable are when it's flowering. So language creators put the speaking function of humans sending out the message to this function of flower, of sending plant, sending message through blossoming, pair them together to mean that's the blossom. That is the message from the flower. Okay, so Yan Ruo Taohua is comparing human female beauty to a uh, flower. And because it has this yen, this vibrancy, this you know, not a socially, I mean, not culturally approved or encouraged the female, female, you know, demeanor. In the beginning, we talked about yao tiao shu nu, right? Fair lady. So how ladylike, like that's culturally expectation of a well brought up, well 
men and girls should look like, right? Should be quiet, should be demeanor, should be, um, you know, just live, give you enough hint, but not over hinting. But here, Yan is like aggressively seductive. <laughs> it's, it's denoted by its color. This Hao Hua is kind of like this color, kind of a fuchsia color. And from the costume, I'm, I'm just grabbing this internet image to illustrate what Yan Ruo Tao Hua may be perceived in the Chinese culture visually, because she is wearing not demure color, but kind of a reddish fuchsia color, highly decorated with a ton of intera, uh, embroidery and showing her neckline. I mean, showing neckline is not a regular thing, at least in ancient recent dynasties, like that's not uh, expected. Cultural norm for female apparel, it's normally covered around here, high collar, right? But here exposing up to there even. Uh, uh, Decolletant was not a thing, like the Chinese are definitely not showing cleavage or anything like that at, at all at least in recent dynasties. So this girl is showing up to here. It's already like, that's pretty daring already. And then with the head, um, hair pins, all kinds of complicated, intricate uh, hair pins. And that's probably pressure stones uh, on gold, right? That shows wealth as well. So this beauty, not only her natural beauty, but she probably is an heiress. Is it called heiress? So she's, Probably a trust fund for a baby in today's lingo that got good um, endowment. So if you are able to get her, your not only her body, her social connection, her wealth, uh, generational passed down wealth, all that, and all this composed together as this aggressive, you know, strong message sending. It's like, look at me. I'm rich. I'm colorful. I'm ready to. <laughs> get myself off the mating market, something like that, right? And then I translate as amorous. It's just a lot of rich cultural dimensions cannot be touched by just one word. But I hope by unfolding it, <laughs> by unpacking to show you the cultural embeddings in there, Yan Ruo Tao Hua definitely have this cultural judgment in that. And the key word is this yen, this vibrancy. And I translate that as amorous. It's as if women declaring or seeking or expressing interest of love. And that was not culturally approved in ancient Chinese, probably in Victoria's uh, time or, I don't know, Puritan tradition as well. Like a woman, you're not supposed to be aggressively seeking love or sending the message of ready to mate, right? So that's yet yeah, real talk. Cash into the currency of thinking by one word a day. We'll see you another day.